please on my um, story real fast. Take your time. Take your time. So you look sharp. I'm trying to look good for you. I uh, put on my little suit and everything is pressed and clean. So it's all in honor of my guest. Oh, you're sweet. I love that. Yes, no, no, no being a slob for you. You deserve the best. You're so sweet. Okay, adding this on my Facebook and done. Okay, perfect. This should be ready to go. Um, okay. Let me make a big picture of you so that now I don't want to see yeah, My picture is really small. Is there a way for me to change that? Well, what happens is your picture of, that's being recorded is huge. Uh -huh. So I see yeah. you big, you see me small. Oh, that's right. true. Right. Okay. So let me make sure that's good. Yeah, I want, I want to see you even bigger, though. That's not big enough. Um, It, yeah, it says Colleen K. Shannon's network bandwidth is low. So now it's blaming you. Very, un very unacceptable. But anyway, the picture, unacceptable. the picture of you is going to be great and recorded and everything will be perfect. Um, so we are streaming, we are live, just two of us. Okay, so I'm here with the world's sexiest DJ. Also, the world's best mom. Um, so far, from what I've heard, the world's nicest person. And her name is, what is your name, beautiful friend? My name is Colleen Shannon. Okay, Colleen Shannon. Um, let's just start off with there. There was a 50th anniversary Playboy magazine, which is kind of the biggest thing that ever happened to the magazine, now that it's pretty much gone. Somebody was in that. Who was in that 50th anniversary Playboy issue? I had, you know, I had attempted to do Playboy like four times and I failed the first time. I failed the second time. I didn't make it the third time. Hef called me once, asked me to be his girlfriend. I kindly declined. Um, <laughs> I think then they called me into test for, for the 50th anniversary Playmate. And I feel like Hef was probably in his 80s then. So I feel like I feel like he recognized my face, but didn't know like where he knew me from. Sure. And somehow, some way, I think maybe they had looked at maybe like 30,000 girls. Oh yeah. Uh, girls were already shot. Like they had already picked the 50th anniversary a couple times over. And I came in in the very end and was able to do that. I was so excited. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. After all those times of them saying no, which makes no sense, then they say, we're going to give you the biggest thing there is. Wow. Wow. It paid, it paid like $50,000. Oh, my God. And I probably did like maybe 50 magazine covers like all over the world. Uh, it was definitely manifestation at its finest. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So you always kind of envisioned that happening then. Oh, yeah. I wanted it so bad, so bad. Good. Well, you got it. We're going to move fast because there's so much. Okay. It's not even funny. Okay. okay. We'll save the big stuff for uh, later real fast. Okay. You're from Alaska. You wind up DJing all over the world with Snoop in Dubai, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you were on TV, How I Met Your Mother. You've been in tons of magazines. You were just a nice little girl from Alaska. How did this happen to you? <laughs> I was... You know, I guess my mom kind of instilled in me, like, if you smile and you're happy and you go after your goals, I was never told that I couldn't do something. So I don't think I was always the best at things, but I always brought like the right attitude. And uh, gosh, I moved to LA and an agent was a friend of mine and was like, why don't you start acting? And I was like, okay, I went like <laughs> on an audition. And I think my lips were like quivering. I was so oh, scared. Yeah. And it was for like Nokia, like, I don't know, something. I was just nervous. Like the casting people made me so nervous. So I didn't get that job. 
then there was a Pepsi national commercial and I grew up drinking Pepsi. So I was just, they, they said, why do you like Pepsi? <laughs> and I was just, I basically just put it out there, just super real and um, happy about it. And that was, that got me into the union for acting. It paid like over $10,000. It was just like, I was like, okay, I, I think I like this job. Like you show yeah. up and you smile and, <laughs> and yeah. So I became a workaholic. $10,000, that's not bad. So when did it lead to like TV shows and then how did you wind up DJ? So when I moved to LA, I moved with some turntables. And I said, you know, I, I don't really know why I'm moving here. Like, I want to be a DJ and I want to be a playmate. And, um, and then when I ended up doing the Playboy thing, they said, how about we shoot your centerfold with turntables? So after I shot that, I started DJing like in Miami and New York and all these places. And it was just like, it went from a hundred people to like, 5,000 people in less than like three months. Oh my God. And they, it was, yeah, it was crazy. And they pay really well for those celebrity type DJs. It's insane, isn't it? Yeah, that was the time when like, um, let's see, who was DJing? Nicole yeah. Richie's girlfriend okay. was DJing. Uh, Tommy Lee was DJing. Uh, Kid. Kid Rock was DJing. Oh so like I would be in Miami, I would be on one stage and Kid Rock was DJing on another stage. And then like playing with like Snoop Dogg and like all these people was like, I just, it just never slowed down. Wow. And I would have anxiety attacks before every show. I was freaking out. And so I would just go, like, I would pray to God, I would say, huh? Yeah, it was just like, I would just say, please, like, let me play, like, awesome music for these people and then throw it out there and then just go for it. And it was once scary. you started, did it kick in once the music was there and the crowd was loving what you were doing? Were you then relaxed and yeah. enjoy it? Like, my first couple songs, my hands would always shake a bit. Like, I would be like, this was the record time where you put the needle on the record and I was always like, ah, like <laughs> freaking out just because like it was like I was so obsessed with it I couldn't believe I was actually doing it for a profession and I I mean I probably played like over a thousand shows in every country all over the world. Wow was there it one was that you really loved? I think what I was is that I loved the people like in all the different countries, like in South Africa, like my, my agents kind of became like family to me because I was spending so much time on the road. So South Africa, Saint-Tropez, Paris, oh like even like Lebanon, places like that, like these Eastern like cultures that, you know, they invite you over to their family's house and you have like a dinner that you can never experience here, like in the U.S. So things like that. I loved. Ah, DJing really brought you the whole world. That is, that's impressive. You said something about Paris Hilton and DJ. What was that about? At Paris's house? So, oh, okay, so um, <laughs> we were talking about like one of the last times I hung out with Hugh Hefner. Okay. Because I was very like particular when I became a playmate, like I never wanted to stay at the mansion. I never wanted to be his girlfriend. I kind of put like some serious boundaries there. And so right. then he asked me if um, he was dating, who was he dating them? The twins, the Shannon twins? Okay. And I forget who else, maybe Holly, Crystal, I'm not sure. So anyway, we go, um, we're getting ready to go to Paris Hilton's uh, birthday party. And um, I remember Hef was drinking. Hef walked in the door. They asked him what he wanted to drink. He wanted a Jack and Coke. And I was like, wow, he really, like, he gets down. So we were drinking, like, Jack and Coke. And um, Paris was there. And just her house alone is a trip. Like, 
her little dogs have mansion houses. Like her dogs have like four story mansions in the backyard. And she has like, um, oh gosh, she had a whole entire wall of maybe like 300 pictures of herself. <laughs> I'm not surprised to do that, okay. I mean, she's beautiful, but I just don't know that I could put myself all over the wall like that. Yeah. A little uh, for yourself. The party was awesome though. Like she had a pole, people were like pole dancing. Like it was just, it was just so fun. And then we went back to the mansion with Hef and we all got up in like his bed and called down to the kitchen, got like grilled cheese sandwiches. And he wanted to watch um, the girls next door. Really? <laughs> like he loved them. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're all in that yeah. gigantic bed eating grilled cheeses, watching girls oh. next door. Yeah, drinking champagne. Of course. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Are there any crazy stories from the mansion? It's okay to tell them now. Hmm, let me think. With celebrities or things you saw? I remember, um, I remember Anna Nicole Smith being there before, like she had passed away. And gosh, she just like was, she was so wild. She was all over the place. She had maybe like 10 of her like craziest family friends, like everybody just like following her around. And it was just, it was kind of crazy to see like certain people like that. Like you bump into Pamela Anderson and Anna Nicole Smith. And then there's a lot of directors, a lot of actors. I ended up DJing there maybe like six times. Because oh, wow. that was my goal. When I first went to the mansion, I'm like, I already had not succeeded at being a playmate. But uh -huh. <laughs> I was uh, I was like, all I want to do is DJ a party here. Like, that would be my dream. And, um, and it happened. My first time DJing, I was playing with um, the Black Eyed Peas DJ. Okay. And I was so nervous. And he kept telling me to take shots. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. shots. Take shots and I had like I probably had one of the biggest like DJ agents at the time he was like Paul Oakenfold's agent so they were happy just to be at the Playboy Mansion but they were also kind of trying to check me out and see how I was DJing uh -huh. and I got off the stage and my manager was like what the hell did you just do I was like it was fucking awesome he's like oh no that was that was absolute shit. But um yeah, two hours went by real fast. Two drunk hours and a blur, a black blur with turntables. I wish I had That's when you're with Yeah, it was just it's funny. At the end of the day, like everybody's just chatting with everybody, but I definitely learned a lesson to, you know, limit myself. Ease up on the shots. Okay. How many <laughs> I mean how many times has Leo DiCaprio hit on you? and other celebrities. Be honest. Oh my God. He is my celebrity crush. Oh boy. For sure. I, every time I've seen him, it seems like 12 girls like swarm around him. And I'm just not that girl. Understood. I'm not that girl. So, um, I was in LA like last month and I, I guess just living there, like, I don't really have celebrity crushes just because you meet a lot of them and you see a lot of them all the time. But um, we had finished doing a photo shoot and I was behind the scenes because I'm launching a bikini line. So, yeah. like, literally hair in a bun, baby in a basket, <laughs> and g -E -Z the rock by. We were at Nobu in Malibu and g -E -Z the rapper. Okay. Walked by and I was like, great. I look like absolute hell right now, but okay. <laughs> I'm sure he still loves you. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. What about you? Who's your celebrity crush? You. Oh, well, you're so sweet. You interview a lot of beautiful girls. I was checking your um your Facebook out. Yeah, we used to do a lot of uh, in person stuff, all the everybody, and uh, now we're doing Zoom. But I only care about you. I only care about you right now. So we're gonna stay top on you. Okay. I want to run through a bunch of quick questions. Um, have you ever been insecure? Have I been what? Insecure. Insecure? Insecure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
always. I think that, hmm, yeah, like even before we did this, um, this interview, I'm like, uh, where should I put my computer? My makeup's not looking right. Like, I don't know, like life is, life is really about energy, right? Mm -hmm. So even if you are a little bit insecure, like just let go of that and just be a person. Cause I think we all, we all have insecurities. Okay, real sexy DJ. Okay, um, any body part you would change or do you have a favorite body part on yourself? I mean, it's so funny. I feel like these days women are just literally doing everything. <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're like totally rebuilding their bodies. Sometimes yeah. I fantasize about just having that super cartoonish, like crazy body and I just don't know if I want to spend that kind of money or take that kind of time <laughs> to do it. Yeah. But, you know. Take out six ribs, yeah. rebuild your face. You don't want to do that. Everything worked out with you. What? Yeah. I don't, it's a lot. It seems like a lot. Yeah. And, and they look like robots. They look like robots. They may have proportions and big lips, but... You see on Instagram, yeah. they all look the same. Different color hair. That's true. All the same. So you That's see true. they are. Or different color wigs. Different what? color wigs. <laughs> what? Wigs. I said different color wigs. Yeah, just different color wigs. That's it. And they all look exactly the same. Um, have you had any crazy offers? I know you have, actually. What offers have you had from super rich men? Come to my mm. art. I have a plane and a whale for you. This is a <laughs> so I was I was DJing in Dubai and I had brought my long-term boyfriend with me and my agents were telling me that one of the princes of Dubai was wanted to take me out to lunch on his yacht and that he was the prince that had given Mariah Carey like a good percentage of her diamonds. Oh my god. And I said I said no. <laughs> oh, wow. Were you afraid of a Liam like, Neeson thing, or you just did feel you didn't want to do it? Like, I'm a, I'm a loyal person. Like, I had, a, I mean, traveling around the world, most of the time I did, like, have a boyfriend. So it was, like, being able to do what I love, but still, like, keeping loyalty, you know? So, Very yeah, nice. there was definitely, that was a situation I wouldn't forget. I kind of wish I had that diamond. <laughs> but you could have sold it and given your boyfriend a Ferrari and bought a house or something, but whatever. He did, he did the respectable yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> is there a word that you can think that describes you really well or a couple words? We know loyal. Um, we know what? We know loyal. I feel like... I think a lot of people, when they like see me only by my pictures, I think they think that I'm going to be like either like stuck up or like a prima donna nice. or tall. <laughs> I'm five foot two. I'm five foot two. Like I've brought like makeup artists on the road with me that are far more like devilicious than me. <laughs> so okay. I, I I'm from like humble beginnings. So I also think it's unpredictable. A lot of people, when they ask me what I do for a living and I tell them I'm a DJ, they're like blown away. Yeah, that is definitely a surprising yeah. thing. Um, can you do any impressions or do you have any weird talented things? I saw in Vanity Fair, they had like major celebrities like yourself and these people could do some weird stuff. <laughs> Are there voices or impressions okay. or? And do like a triple taco with my tongue. A triple what? Taco. Okay, please do. I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what that is? Yes, I've seen that before. Okay, you are one talented, famous <laughs> celebrity DJ. I did not expect that. Okay. Um, is there anything other than like you said the DJ uh, career surprises people, and that you're down to earth? Is there anything else that like would surprise someone if, let's say, a bunch of fans got to go to Olive Garden with you? Um, hmm. I guess people are surprised that I'm from Alaska. Mm -hmm. 
That's kind of surprising. Um, I'm not quite sure. Okay. I don't know. Oh, yeah, probably some things <laughs> that we'll probably talk about later on in the All interview. Right. Have you ever been rejected? Rejected? Yeah. By a guy? Yeah. You need By to a guy. Find it, okay. Right? You don't even know what it is. Yes. No, actually, so throughout like my DJing career, you know, I would have a boyfriend and then I'd be single and boyfriend be single. Well, I started dating this basketball player. Um, his name is Marco Jarek. Okay. And I think I just probably liked him because he was tall. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was probably like six feet seven. And I thought he had a crush on Britney Spears. And really? so we dated oh, for a yeah. while. And Wait, he had a crush on Britney Spears? You did. He did. He uh -huh. did. He had like a magazine with like her cover on it, like in his bathroom or whatever. But um, gigantic like mansion, like just super, super loaded. But he was also really cool. So anyway, he, he starts like not calling me back. And I'm getting like pretty upset. And he's like not able to hang out and all this stuff. Um, come to find out he married Adriana Lima. <laughs> oh and she had like three kids with him. So you were dating him <laughs> as he was married. And he no, he had not he had not gotten married to Adriana, but within like the next year or two, he probably he might have met um, Adriana around that time. We stopped talking. And he ended up having a family with her, oh marrying God. her. And I'm like, okay. Now they're divorced, yeah. Naturally, of course. I think he cheated, he cheated on her. Oh, well, he's got a great reputation. Um, so he transitioned. Hello, little person. Hello, little person. Hi. Did you see him? How you doing, little guy? You're the favorite. He has a whole car collection. Stevie. Here's the reason I'm here. Once he this is going to be all over this. <laughs> what you got, buddy? You want to show your friend your car? Tell me what you got, little dude. I got a phone. You got a phone? I got a phone, yeah. You got a phone? Show him. Watch. That you is want to call somebody? Say hello. Wow. Hello? You're a big boy. You got your own phone. I'm really impressed. Oh, you calling me? Are you calling for a piece? Who are you calling? Who are you calling? Brother. Brother? Brother, me help. Oh, hello? Hi, Stevie's not here right now. Can I take a message? Okay, he'll call you back. All right, thank you. He's going to call you back, okay? Bye, brother. Give Bye, me brother. a big hug. Tell mommy she's the best in the world. <laughs> Go do that later. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think what I can ask. Um, do you think you intimidate men? I got a toy. What's that? Oh. What do you got, dude? Uh oh, Stevie. Uh oh, how do I get back to you? I see you. I don't know what's going on. Oh no, Stevie. Zoom. Mm. I might have to zoom you again. I don't see you. Okay, I see you. Um, oh, well, we'll just keep going. Well, I no, can't see you. Wrong. I don't want to mess. Look. Yeah, um, Look. Okay. Where is it, Stevie? I don't know where I am. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Should we start? Because I see that it says you're here. Colleen Chen. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't have your video on. It says your video is off. Video is off? Yeah. For you, okay. Off. What is the icon for Zoom so I can like look for it? Um, or should I go back to Facebook and resume you? How about this? We'll just shut this <laughs> down and we'll do a quick part two. I'll send you another invite and we'll just do the same thing. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Send it down now. Okay.